Hey, second grade, this is Mrs. Alar back again with another chapter of Sunset of the Sabertooth. Um, we are going to be reading chapter two today, but before we dive into chapter two, let's go over the vocabulary word as well as the discussion question from yesterday's chapter one. So our first vocabulary word from chapter one was journey. And so we we're trying to figure out what is a journey? Well, we defined a journey as to from traveling from one place to another. So if you are going from the classroom to the cafeteria, that could be considered a journey, right? Because you're taking a trip from the classroom to the cafeteria. You could also think of a journey as a trip to go to another state. If you're going to visit your aunt in another state, you're taking a journey from Charlotte to wherever your aunt lives. So that is what we are defining as a journey. And then we had two questions. Question number one was what was the letter that was on all of the belongings that they found? If you said the letter M, that is the correct letter. And then our next question was, why did Jack want to wait? Why was he not ready to go to the journey? Well, because he was afraid they were going to go somewhere cold based off of the picture, and they were wearing their bathing suits. And is a bathing suit the right thing that you should wear if it's cold outside? No, you should probably wear a sweater or a jacket, something that will make you warmer. So let's see what happens in Chapter 2. Chapter 2 is titled, Bones. Jack, Annie, and Peanut looked outside. Snow was falling from the gray sky. The treehouse was in the tallest tree in a grove of tall bear trees. The grove was on a wide white plain. Beyond the plain, there were high rocky cliffs. I'm c c cold, said Annie. Her teeth were chattering. She wrapped her towel tightly around her. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Peanut sounded cold, too. Poor mouse, said Annie. I'll put you into Jack's pack. You'll be warmer there. Annie slipped Peanut into the pocket of the backpack. We have to go home, said Jack. We need warmer clothes. We can't go home, said Annie. We can't find the Pennsylvania book, not until the mission is complete. Don't you remember? That's the only way the magic works. Oh, right, said Jack. He looked around. There was no sign of the Pennsylvania book. That always got them home. Annie peered out the window again. Where are we anyway, she asked. I'll find out, said Jack. He picked up the open book and read the title on the cover. Life in the Ice Age. The Ice Age, said Annie. No wonder we're cold. We better find the third M thing soon before we freeze. Look, whispered Annie. People. She pointed out the window. Jack saw them too. Four figures on a cliff. Two big figures and two little ones, all holding onto long spears. Who are they? said Annie. I'll look in the book, said Jack. He found a picture of some people. In the caption, it said, Early modern humans were called Cro-Magnons. During the late Ice Age in Europe, they sometimes lived in caves beneath cliffs. Why are they carrying spears? said Annie. Jack turned the page. He found another picture of the Cro-Magnons. He read aloud. The Cro-Magnon family often hunted together. They covered deep pits with branches. Then they drove reindeer into them to trap them. Trapping animals? That's sad, said Annie. No, it's not, said Jack. They couldn't live without hunting. They didn't have supermarkets, you know. They watched the family disappear over the side of the cliff. Come on, I am freezing, said Jack. Let's hurry and find the M thing while the cro are hunting. But I want to meet them, said Annie. Forget it, said Jack. They don't have books that tell them about us. They'll think we're an enemy and try to use their spears on us. Yikes, said Annie. Jack put the book away. Squeak! Peanut peeked out of the backpack. Stay in there, said Annie. Jack put on his backpack and started down the rope ladder. Annie followed. On the icy ground, they huddled together. The wind was biting. Jack put his towel over his head. Snow blew against his glasses. Hey, Jack, said Annie, look at me. Annie put on her swimming goggles. Now I can see, said Jack, said, said Annie. Good thinking, said Jack. Now cover your head with your towel. Most of your heat is lost from your head. Annie wrapped her towel around her head. We should find a cave or someplace warmer, said Jack. I bet there are caves in those cliffs, said Annie. 
She and Jack started across the white plain. The snow wasn't deep yet, but the wind was blowing hard. I told you, Annie said, pointing to a rock, a cave. They ran to it. Careful, said Jack. They stepped carefully into the shadowy cave. It was only slightly warmer inside, but at least the wind wasn't blowing. In the gray light, they stamped the snow off of their sneakers. Annie took off of her goggles. It smells in here, said Jack. Yeah, like wet dog, said Annie. Let me find out what I can, said Jack. He pulled out the Ice Age book. I'll look around, said Annie. Maybe the M thing is in here. Then we could go home and get warm. Jack stood by the entrance so he could read the book in the light. This, this cave is filled with sticks, said Annie. What, said Jack. He didn't look up from the book. No, wait, I think they're bones, said Annie. Bones, echoed Jack. Yeah, lots of them back here, all over the floor. Jack turned the pages of the book. He found a picture of a cave filled with bones. I hear something, said Annie. Jack read the writing below the picture. It said, the great cave bears of the Ice Age were over eight feet tall. These bears were larger and fiercer than today's grizzly bears. Their caves were filled with the bones of their ancestors. Annie, whispered Jack, get back here now. They were in the cave of a great cave bear. That is the end of chapter two. Check back tomorrow for chapter three and see what happens when they figure out what is going on in this cave with a bear in it. Look in the comment section for the vocabulary and the comprehension question for today. Bye!